This is the first video in a series on use of temperaments in healing systems. The use of temperament as diagnostic tools and in the production of herbal medicines is common to all systems of traditional medicine. Understanding temperament requires a different approach that is presently used by contemporary medicine. Let's look at the differences. In today's scientific worldview, matter can exist theoretically in four states or phases, the solid, the liquid, the gas, and warmth. In a solid, it's considered that the parts that make up a solid are arranged in such a way they are very closely packed to each other. This gives them very little freedom of movement. If warmth is applied to a solid, the atoms that make up the solid are given a degree of freedom and they begin to move and they form wave patterns. That is then known as liquid. Still more warmth causes the liquid to expand to the degree that the particles separate with a lot of space in between, and that's the gas. If it's heated even more than warmth, we'll just put one particle there. Warmth state is reached in order to really describe that one particle there would have another particle of the same substance probably at the end of the block. And that is theoretically the warmth state. Now the old people understood that these phase changes were part of the natural order. They would look at the earth and since they worked with a lot and dug in it to make food for themselves, they said that the, the so what we would call a solid condition, they said is the element of earth. And then they understood that when water was present in lakes and rivers, that it was sitting in the earth or on the earth, in the form of waves. So the liquid phase of the waves, they would see, they called it water. And they also recognized that in nature, the water has a surface here. So I'll put surface. The surface between water and the next element they would see mists rising off of the water <clears throat> as things got warmer. And they said that is due to the action of what they called air. And eventually the water would be lifted into the form of a cloud. That was their observation. And then they understood that that cloud and the water rising off of the lake is a mist was due to the action of warmth, and they called that fire. So we can see from this that the old idea of elements and the contemporary idea based on atomic theory have a lot in common. So a physicist today would say, if I took the warmth here that is driving it all, and I put the warmth underneath, that the warmth underneath would be driving the other elements up because the warmth would be pushing up. The solid would become a liquid, become molten. The liquid become a gas, and the gas would become warmth. The old people understood that also. They had the alchemist who made the basis said, we put fire under the earth. And when we put fire under the earth, the earth drives the earth up and the water up and the air up. So there again, the principle of cooking something 
that the old people understood and the principle of theoretical physics were in line with each other. When we put the fire under the earth, things begin to change and the action is here at the surface. And so that creates different conditions that we'll look at in the next video. Thanks for watching.